Oh, oh no, dude. <laughs> Guys, today is the day that we're gonna be finally working on my Audi R8. It is absolutely insane to say that I'm actually working on my dream car on the YouTube channel that I created to get that dream car of mine. I can't stress this enough, but it's kind of insane how manifestation is really real. That's the exact car that I'm looking at right behind the camera right now. That's the exact car I've wanted since I was a child. I wanted a V8 manual um, and in black, black on black. That was my, actually, no, actually I'm not gonna lie. I did possibly want a red interior, um, but the black is really grown on me i really like the black i just love the really like, murdered out look of this car um but this was almost like my dream spec to the t and uh, it's just insane to see it on my driveway. Now, good news is I finally got some parts in to actually start working on that Audi R8, so I'm super excited for it. And that's what today's video is all about, is honestly working on that bad boy. But uh, before we actually get into that, I do wanna mention something that's kind of insane. If you guys look at this Carfax report, right there on the bottom, it says that this Audi R8 has 600, I believe 670,000 miles, 657,000 miles. Um, now, when printing out this Carfax report, I was like, what the heck? Now, I knew when buying this Audi R8, I did notice that the Copa part auction said not actual mileage next to the 70,000 miles that this car actually had. Now I was like, that's a little weird, but I didn't really go for the Carfax and honestly, that was kind of stupid of me. But again, for the price that I got it for, I didn't really care to check. As long as it was a running drive and it was a gated manual and the damage wasn't all that bad, I really didn't care how much mileage this thing actually had. And to my surprise, it looks like the insurance company messed up on the miles on here. And that also could have been the reason why I got it for so cheap. For those of you guys who are not familiar with German cars, which is not really going to be most of you guys, because most of you guys are here for BMW content, but an Audi is just as cool. At least an Audi R8, if y'all know what I mean. <laughs> it's every BMW's guy's dream car is an Audi R8. At least that feels so. At least that feels so. Because, I mean, come on, let's be real. BMW, I'm getting sidetracked, but BMW doesn't really have a supercar. So the Audi R8 is like the next car in line for a BMW's dream supercar. At least the first one, if you guys know what I mean. Anyways, anyways, this is an exotic, not a supercar. I know, I know. It's a V8, but just relax, relax. If you guys have ever replaced an odometer on a German car, uh, most times if the odometer has more mileage than the car has, the car will choose the miles from the odometer. So you guys are gonna go ahead and see. So if I throw in a 200,000 mileage uh, odometer in this car, the car's gonna say it has 200,000 miles. So I assume that when it said not actual and it has 70,000 miles on it, that's probably gonna be the max the car has um, just because like, I mean, you can't really put in a higher mileage one and not be the higher mileage one. If it had 50,000 miles, they put in a 70,000 mile one, then you know, now you're at 70,000 miles. And I was kind of okay with 70,000 miles regardless. So, so that being said, 657,000 miles doesn't scare me. And I'll show you guys why exactly. So first things first, showing you guys the full Carfax history. This car has been maintained at the dealer almost its entire life. And I say almost, I mean, honestly, pretty much its entire life. And I'm really happy to say that the drive belts have been replaced at 57,000 miles, which is only 13,000 miles ago. And the most important thing that was replaced is right over here, axles checked and the main thing, clutch replaced, guys. I don't know if you guys know how much a clutch replacement is on an Audi R8, but that was only done five or 6,000 miles ago. And I called a few places and a clutch replacement on an Audi R8 is around $10,000. Parts and labor, um, so kind of insane to say that I got an Audi R8 with a brand new clutch for $24,000. Isn't that, I, honestly, I'm just baffled. Now coming back right over here, this is where things kind of get interesting. The miles were kind of consistent up until February 28th of 2022. So in January, it only had 65,000 miles and it was consistent all the way across above that. But then literally the next month, all of a sudden, it jumps from 65 to 657,977 in March. So that basically leads me to believe that they actually put an extra seven on there, which pretty much jumped the mileage to an insane number. And that can get fixed after the car gets registered. Basically means that nothing in this car was actually replaced, which is really comforting for me. So the, the biggest issue with the mileage on the title and everything like that is mainly because of somebody inputting a number in, a, in their own system that was incorrect. Not that they actually put like a, another computer in this car or another, you know, or another odometer or coded something or wired up something. So nothing to the car has been touched, which is really comforting for me. This is just some kind of typo and this can get fixed. So thankfully this looks like a serious issue because my Audi already could have had 657,000 miles for anyone that ran the Carfax before bidding on this car. Uh, but thankfully that's not the issue. Another thing worth addressing, it does say that it had a roof damage, very minor roof damage. That could honestly just been one ding and they got that repaired through the insurance company. So that's not a big deal. And then as you guys can see, front hit, front hit, 
two reports in the front, both considered minor damage, um, and that honestly ended up totaling the car. Because as you guys can see, that's about it. There's nothing really left on this Carfax. So as you guys can see from the Carfax, honestly, more good news than bad news. We got a new clutch, but unfortunately, um, it has a million miles on the car. It does have roof damage, but it was repaired. Um, but at least at the same time, we also got uh, brand new belts on the car. So maintenance on this car, guys, is not really the cheapest thing to get done. Obviously, the engine's in the back, a little bit harder um, to get to, in my opinion. It doesn't look as easy. Um, and that's just something more, you need like a professional tech for stuff like that. Now, I'm sure I can actually figure out some things on my own. I've learned how to work on BMWs on my own. This was self-taught. I'm sure I could figure out how to work on my own Audi R8. But guys, thankfully, no mechanical damage. All the coolers are there. All the wiring looks really good. So honestly, this is all just cosmetic, which is kind of insane. I don't have any codes on the dashboard that say I have a coolant leak, an oil leak, some kind of like sensor malfunction. The only things I'm having is like wiper issues and headlight issues, and that's about it. But I'm not gonna sit here and say, hey, this is gonna be the cheapest repair I've ever done, because even though that doesn't look like a lot of damage, um, that's gonna cost me a lot of money to fix. And already, I've already ordered thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of parts for this Audi R8, and not from the dealership, because the dealership, I went there, and I got maybe like one or two parts, everything else was discontinued. The parts are discontinued on these exotic cars, mainly because they, there weren't so many made to begin with, and on top of that, it is a 2010, so they just don't hold on to parts for an Audi R8 anymore, which really makes this car kind of scary to drive if you don't have full coverage because any little incident, you'll be waiting months to get parts. Everything I had to order it came from uh, Germany or Lativa through eBay. Um, nothing actually came from the dealership because they don't have anything for this car. As you guys can see though, the car does have a new hood though and I got this off OfferUp, which is kind of insane. I got a color match black hood for $1,000 on offer. You guys saw on the journey of picking up this Audi R8, I found somebody selling a hood. They had it in the backyard for four years and I decided to set an offer for $1,000 see if I can get lucky and get it. And he said yes, we ended up copping that hood. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the footage right now, me and my brother actually installing this bad boy. And guys, we got the first couple of things to actually get the R8 on the road. Um, and it's these two bad boys right over here. These are two brand new hood hinges. Unfortunately, the two hood hinges on this uh, this R8 is not really doing so good. It kind of kicked right into the door. It gave it the door a little ding right over here. It's just messing up the gaps on this side. And as you guys can see, even on this side, unfortunately. So I really hate opening up the door. I really hate opening up the hood with these bad hinges. So I, honestly, it's time to just replace the hinges. But not only replace the hinges, we have a brand new hood and we have a brand new hood latch. Fun fact about this hood latch, guys, this is the same hood latch you guys get out of a normal Audi. Um, our rates are for, if you're trying to get one for the Audi R8, it's $150. And uh, if you want to get one used on eBay for a normal Audi, it's the exact same one. $20. So I accidentally bought this for $80 brand new compared to a used one for, you know, I got, I got a good deal on it brand new, but could have got this for 20 bucks. So what difference does it make really, you know, end of the day. So pay attention to stuff like that guys when you're building exotic cars because you can save some money on little things like this. So you guys are seeing the damage for the first time with the hood open. Thankfully, we have two good shocks on both sides. So that's good over there. That's good over here. If you guys look right up over here, um, unfortunately this is damaged. That's the new hood latch we ended up picking up. It's completely snapped out of place. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be replacing this whole assembly on the new hood. Come on over here, we do need to transfer on these hood latches right over here. We have these pieces down here we need to transfer over to the new hood as well. And then this right over here, we're just gonna completely take it off and get rid of it. This section right over here was actually where the impact was. If you guys should look at the hood, this is where the impact was on the R8. So if you guys look at it right over here, Everything over here looks perfect. All of our radiator lines, uh, coolant lines, everything, air ducts, brackets, uh, the frame itself, this is where it normally cracks on each side and both of them are looking super good. So we got lucky on that, I'm not gonna lie, unless it was already reinforced possibly um, because I am seeing a little bit of overspray and black over here. So it could have possibly already been reinforced by the previous owner. This tub thankfully is not broken. This tub is a $2,000 tub from Audi. Um, so the tub is good. Again, brackets are good. All the radiator coolant, everything like that is good. Um, the fact that it went for $24,000, 700, 24, 700, it's kind of insane. It really is like, bro, can you even believe you have an Audi R8 for $24,000? Like that's the price you get at M3, M3, M4, right? Total. Total. You know, like, I don't even know what to say, y'all. <laughs> it's just, it's gonna take some time to digest. And yeah, like... I, I think when, when we're driving this thing, hopefully end of the day and everything's gravy in the Navy, it's, 
I still won't even digest it then because it's just an insane, it's an absolute blessing. So I'm super happy about that. Again, if you guys look over here as well, um, the frame is not cracked. It's looking really, really, really good. Um, nothing here was buckled or damaged. We still have all of this stuff. It does have a police radar, so I'm probably gonna uninstall that because here in Cali, that, you won't get away with that. They'll, they'll get you for that. Thankfully, the windshield is perfectly fine. I saw Sam crack when he actually uh, did some framework over here. He cracked his windshield and ended up spending like a couple grand out of pocket. So thankfully, the windshield is fine. That's another reason I'm trying to replace this hood ASAP um, because I really don't want it getting near the windshield and cracking it for any reason possible. But without further ado, guys, we do have pretty much everything mounted. It's honestly ready to go. Once we actually get the new hood on here, um, theoretically, it should be able to shut and open, which I'm very excited about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take off this back hood and put on our new good hood. So you guys can see that this one's in the center and this one's kind of off to the right for you guys. So uh, yeah, this is definitely the new one, definitely the better one. Let's just go ahead and get this bad boy installed. And uh, I just realized, what? <laughs> being a homeowner, I don't like throwing things on my concrete. <laughs> yeah, I thought I almost cracked it for a second. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> Look at us being heck of responsible and stuff. <laughs> can see the hood is on there the fitment's not absolutely perfect but we have brand new hinges and one of them i did end up getting that part from the dealer the other one i had to wait a month and a half to get here um and then uh yeah the hood is a good hood there's no damage to this hood so i know that these gaps can get fixed eventually it's just really hard to play with the gaps when it comes to you actually replacing a hinge and the hood because that basically means now you have two points of adjustments to get this where you want and i'm not a professional so i'm gonna need some help on this the reason that was the first thing i ended up replacing on this audi r8 is because as you guys can see the hood was damaged the doors on both sides every time I open the hood or every time I open the door one or the other will get damaged I didn't really care for the old hood but the doors were definitely reusing these but this door is definitely gonna need a respray as you guys can see the paint kind of came off right over here and based off of not seeing any rust over here I'm assuming this door is made out of aluminum so that is super cool and if you guys look over here there's a small dent that can get fixed that can get repainted so this door is definitely gonna need to get blended and repaired and the driver's door as well doesn't have any dings thankfully but this is definitely gonna have to get uh, blended and repaired as well now it is it's kind of cold outside today, so I'm gonna go ahead, start up the Audi R8, pull into the garage, my dream car, pulling into the garage, and finally start assembling this front end so we can possibly start driving her pretty soon here. Without further ado, cold start up on an Audi R8 2010. E91 M3 cold startup on my 2007 E91 M3. Kind of crazy to see it's a 2007 as well because it's not only did BMW not make an M3 wagon, but they didn't even make an M3 in 2007. So kind of crazy to say 2007 E91 M3 wagon. <laughs>
unfortunately getting into the rebuild on the Audi R8, I figured I might as well show you guys what this Audi R8 has. Most Audi R8s don't, at least for a V8. Now my favorite color for the Audi R8, like I said guys, is black. I just think it's such a timeless color on a timeless car and it just looks so, so, so good. Especially paired up with the carbon fiber side blades and let me show you guys the interior and what I'm talking about exactly. So this one in particular, this Audi R8 has the extended leather dashboard. So, so basically the extended leather on an Audi R8 and I love how this has this Quattro badge. Every single Audi R8 first generation has a Quattro badge. Every single one of these are Quattro, but I just think it looks so cool. I love little details like that. The dashboard has this really nice texture to it. It just feels like super high quality leather. So the dashboard has the leather add on. Um, as you guys can see over the cluster as well, um, it has that beautiful extra leather on there, the stitching and the extended leather doesn't really end there. I believe it also extends to these side pillars right over here because these feel like really high quality. They don't feel like plastic whatsoever. So I do believe these are actually wrapped in some kind of leather but most importantly is something you touch every single day which is actually these door cards so this door card right over here is wrapped in this really nice and thick leather it feels super nice to the touch and it just feels super high quality so again not all audi r8s come with this package and uh, the fact that this one does for the price that we got it for is super sick but not only does it actually have this amazing package but it also has this amazing package which is the carbon package guys the carbon package on an audi r8 v8 interior is very 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 rare it is not something that i even saw in the photos because i honestly didn't expect it but it has the carbon over here from the factory on both sides it has the carbon piece right over here that goes all around the dashboard and actually meets up with the door right over here it just looks so 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 sick and the extended leather paired up with the carbon trim really makes this interior still feel like brand new again such a timeless design such a timeless interior i love this car i love the interior of everything about it i'm definitely not going to be adding anything to this car that's going to really change the look of it because i'm not gonna lie when you guys actually slap on a major wing on there put some newer style wheels on there for some reason it makes the car look older the way the car looks and the way that audi made it it just looks so timeless the way it is so i think i'm gonna keep it as stock as possible maybe add a few more little carbon fiber touches but again speaking of carbon this is the most rarest package guys the most rarest package for an audi r8 v8 which is the carbon package in the engine bay you guys can see that this is carbon that is carbon this is carbon this is carbon this is carbon you used to see a bunch of carbon been in this engine bay even that back piece right over there is in carbon guys it looks so 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 sick this engine looks so nasty i'll absolutely love it and unfortunately guys at this part of the video i realized that all my audio is just for some reason missing on the rest of my videos so uh you guys are about to hear a lot of narration and that's super unfortunate but i guess that means just more working and less talking so the first thing we're going to start working on on the audi r8 is going to be the headlights as you guys can see this is the original headlight it has broken tabs well, actually, technically only one broken tab on the top. Both of the tabs on the sides are perfectly fine, but this particular headlight as well um, also has a crack on the lens, which basically means that I need to get a new lens and a new tab. So long story short, I decided to just pick up an entirely new headlight. But when I say entirely new, even if I wanted to order a new headlight, there's no way I can get my hands on one. So I picked one up used, and this one was in almost mid condition, but you guys can see the tab on the top as well on this headlight is broken, unfortunately. But the lens is an absolute perfect shape so it should function like normal um, we just need to figure out a way to repair that tab on the top and reuse this headlight in its entirety um, we do need to transfer over the modules and stuff like that but other than that um, this headlight should be ready to go as far as the driver's side headlight this one is a pretty much mid condition um, it's just again one broken tab on the top but we do have a tab repair kit for this one I was able to get that one from Audi that just didn't have it for the passenger side only the driver's side <music> So at this point, actually, before installing the headlights, I did want to remove the bin and see if anything's disconnected down there, anything's damaged down there, and uh, just pretty much see the overall condition, and maybe it'll even make it easier to install the whole front end assembly with this bin out. So we're gonna go ahead and just take off this bin, um, and honestly, we had a lot to work in terms of the front end, because we need to get this hood to close, um, we need the crash bar on there. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get all those stuff installed as well before actually installing our headlights. <music>
So now that we actually have the crash bar installed, we have the bumper support, we have the hood support, everything actually ended up bolting up properly, which means everything is straight, which I'm really happy about. It was now time for us to figure out the whole hood latch situation. There's three different mechanisms for the hood latch. There is basically the main hood latch, there's the mechanisms that control the two other hood latches on both sides, and then there's the emergency hood latch release, and all three of these need to connect together um, basically to function as one. And it is super complicated because again, there's nothing online that tells you how to install this exactly. So I'm pretty much just trying to figure it out. I'm trying to look at the bin, trying to figure out where everything kind of goes. Also, this little black thing, I don't really know where that goes exactly. If you guys have any idea, let me know down below. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and just play around with this and figure it out and hopefully we can get this thing installed. But before actually installing the hood latches, I figured I might as well actually start test fitting the headlights on each side um, just because honestly, again, I was so lost on those latches. I figured I might as well at least start doing the headlights. I want to see some major progress. Um, so as you guys can see, this is the headlight tab repair kit and it actually comes with screws and a new tab that you can pretty much screw onto your headlight. Um, so that's super nice and I was trying to get that for both my headlights, but I can only get them for the left side. All the right sides I ordered on eBay. Um, um, through the dealership they all ended up canceling the order saying they're discontinued they're you, you just can't find them so i honestly ordered one of the last uh driver side tab repair kits out there in the world at least it's going to help us fix one of our headlights and as you guys can see it is bolted up looking amazing like factories that's super nice i'm going to be doing a little bit of trimming to the the original broken tab so that will look a whole lot cleaner uh, but we still need to figure out what we need to do exactly for the uh the passenger headlight um because that tab is broken as well we do have the original tabs that snap off so possibly just plastic weld that back on but again i'm gonna try my best to get an oem uh, repair kit because it's just the best way to go So now after messing with the latch assembly for some time, I finally figured out where the center one goes and how that rear one connects to the center one. Um, and as you guys can see, it's like, it has like three different things on that one latch. You have the loose one that goes to the emergency release, and then you have the other two that connect to the outer uh, latches and the center latch. Now I also noticed that my latches were also all bent. I'm assuming that's because of either the accident or people prying up on the hood constantly trying to get it to open um, from after the accident. So I decided to go ahead and remove them and see if I can kind of bend them straight. And the good news is I was able to get the latches straight because those are $150 each, but unfortunately the bracket, there's no way to get that straight just because of how sophisticated it was. So I just ordered a new one. So here we are at the end of the video and I am so mad guys, so mad that all that footage, guys, there was so much talking clips. There's so much other things that I showed you guys through my camera that I wasn't able to pretty much voice over because it just didn't really make sense. Um, it was just so unfortunate that my camera kind of took a dump into where the micro microphone doesn't work and the internal microphone doesn't work. I don't know if it's the, the camera or some settings that I messed up on there or something I probably accidentally clicked. But long story short, I even recorded some of the E91 content with the camera, assuming the audio is good and it's messed up. So thankfully, at least the footage is good. So the footage for the most part, you guys got to see what I pretty much did with the R8. There's still some things I need to order, um, still some things I need to sort out before we can actually get the whole front end together. But in the meantime, at least we got pretty much the hood to shut properly. It does open and close properly with uh, the center latch and the driver's latch. The passenger latch, we did need to order a bracket. So um, that's not a big deal. Thankfully, that's only like 40, 50 bucks used. Uh, thankfully, there was one used one out there in the market so really worked out for us so far honestly really 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 happy how things are going so far um again i'll keep you all posted and hopefully hopefully i'll give you guys a better update and hopefully my camera gets fixed soon so uh yeah i i'm, I'm just i was just so mad to do voiceovers because i really wanted to show you guys every little detail that i got filmed for you guys it should have been at least a 35 minute video um but now it's down to 24 so it is what it is without further ado i love y'all so much remember to stay humble i'll see y'all the next one peace out